This video is on axillary artery and we will consider the axillary artery under the following headings. First is the extent of the artery, then what are the different parts of the artery, how it is divided into different parts, then the branches of the different parts of the artery and then we will look at the structures which are supplied by the branches of axillary artery. Now before I start with the axillary artery, let us have a very brief uh, outlook of the arterial supply of upper limb. So here we can see this is the arch of aorta. All of you must be knowing by now that there are three branches from the arch of aorta and these are on the right side we have the brachiocephalic trunk, then we have the left common carotid artery and left subclavian artery. The brachiocephalic trunk on the right side that is going to divide into right subclavian artery and right common carotid artery. So this subclavian artery which runs in the uh, neck, once it reaches the axilla, you start calling this as the axillary artery. The axillary artery in the arm, you start calling this as brachial artery. Brachial artery here gives one very important branch which is known as profunda brachii artery which is the main artery of the arm. In the cubital fossa at the level of the radial tuberosity, this uh, brachial artery is going to divide into a medial branch known as ulnar artery and a lateral branch which is known as radial artery. These two arteries are going to not only supply the forearm, they will also supply the hand. Now in the palm, these two arteries, their branches, they are going to form two arches, the superficial arch and the deep arch. And from these two arches, we will have the digital arteries which will be supplying the fingers or the digits. So this is the brief description of how the uh, arterial supply of the upper limb occurs. Let us come to axillary artery now. This is the main artery of the upper limb. We have seen this is the only artery which is going to enter into the upper limb. So where does it begin? It begins as continuation of subclavian artery. We have already seen that. Where exactly? At the outer border of the first rib. So why we say it begins here? Because this is the point where the axilla begins. This is where we have the cervico axillary canal or apex of the axilla. The three boundaries of cervico axillary canal. That means that opening which connects the neck to the axilla, they are anteriorly we have the clavicle and then medially we have this rib, first rib. And posteriorly, we have the upper border of the scapula. So this is the point of entrance of the axillary artery, right? So it begins at the outer border of the first rib. As soon as it enters the axilla, we start calling the subclavian artery as axillary artery. Now it is going to run through the axilla. And then what happens is at the lower border of the teres major, this is the teres major muscle attached to the along the lateral border of scapula. So at the lower border or lower border of the teres major, it continues as brachial artery. So the artery is same. We have given different name. When it is in the neck, we called it subclavian artery. When it runs in the axilla, we call it axillary artery. And when it enters the brachium or the arm, we start calling the same artery as the brachial artery. So extent of the axillary artery is clear. Axillary artery begins at the outer border of first strip and ends at the lower border of teres major. So here we can see some relations of the axillary artery. We can see here this is the axillary artery in the axilla and medial to that we have the axillary vein running. You can see here yellow colored uh, the branches and the cords of the brachial plexus. So this axillary artery is surrounded by the cords and their branches, cords and the branches of the brachial plexus. Now these, uh, all these structures, the neurovascular bundle which is present in the axilla, this is uh, ensheathed by the axillary sheet which will be thinner along the axillary vein but will be thicker where it is enclosing the axillary artery and the cords and the branches of the brachial plexus. So what are the parts of axillary artery? Axillary artery is divided into three parts by two imaginary lines and these lines uh, we have drawn uh, using the upper and the lower border of which muscle? The pectoralis minor muscle. So actually it is the pectoralis minor muscle which divides the axillary artery into three parts. 
So what are these three parts and their extent? Let us see. So the first part of the axillary artery that will start from the beginning that is at the outer border of the first rib till the upper border of pectoralis minor. This part is known as first part. Where do we have the second part? The second part passes deep to the pectoralis minor muscle. So that part of the artery which lies deep to the pectoralis minor muscle we call that as the second part. And the third part, now it is obvious, the third part is going to extend from the lower border of the pectoralis minor muscle to the lower border of the teres major muscle. So which muscle divides axillary artery into different parts? It is the pectoralis minor muscle. And how many parts are there? There are three parts. Which part lies deep to the pectoralis minor? It is the second part which lies deep to the pectoralis minor muscle. Now we will have a look at the branches of axillary artery. Let us look at the branches of axillary artery. So remember we have three parts. So it is actually very simple to remember that first part will give only one branch, second part will give two branches and the third part will give three branches. Let us look at the names of these branches. From the first part, the artery that arises, this is known as superior thoracic artery. So this will be supplying the upper part of the thoracic region there. So only one artery from the first part, the name of the artery is superior thoracic artery. The second part of the axillary artery which passes behind the pectoralis minor will give two branches and the names of these two branches are the first one is thoracoacromial as the name suggests uh, it will be supplying here the thoracic region also and uh, it will also go towards the acromion the shoulder region there right then this is the artery which actually pierces the thoraco uh, sorry the clavipectoral fascia also. And then it divides into four branches. The names of these four branches I'll tell you a little later. So the first branch from the second part is thoracoacromial artery. The second branch is lateral thoracic artery. We can see this artery running along the lower border of the pectoralis minor and supplying the pectoral region there. So two arteries from second part are thoracoacromial and lateral thoracic. Coming to third part, so it will give rise to three arteries and where have we reached now? Now we are going towards the brachium. So the humerus will be present here on the lateral side and here we will have the lateral border of the scapula. So we need arteries which will be supplying these regions. So the names of these three arteries are, the first one you can see here, uh, this is the anterior circumflex humeral artery. As the name suggests, it is going to form a circle around something. And it goes around which a part of the humerus? The surgical neck of the humerus. So this is anterior circumflex humeral. There is another artery which is also going to wind around the surgical neck of the humerus. And this is the larger of the two. And this artery is the posterior circumflex humeral artery. As the name suggests, this will be located more posteriorly and laterally. The two arteries anastomose with each other also. So these are the two arteries around the surgical neck of the humerus, anterior circumflex humeral and posterior circumflex humeral. The third artery, which will be, which you can see here, this artery, this will be running along the lateral border of the scapula or along the lower border of the subscapularis muscle. So that's why the name of this artery is subscapular. This artery is subscapular artery. So the three branches are anterior circumflex humeral, posterior circumflex humeral and the subscapular artery from the third part of axillary artery. Now we will look at the distribution. Okay, before that, uh, let us see, you can remember the branches by using this mnemonic that is save the lions and protect species. Save the lions and protect species. Save is, S is for the superior thoracic artery, the T is for thoracoacromial, line is for lateral thoracic and is for anterior circumflex humeral, protect P is for posterior circumflex humeral and species ka S is for subscapular artery. So now we will go to the distribution. Okay, so branches of axillary artery and the structures supplied by them. So we will start with the art branch of first part that is superior thoracic artery. This is going to supply the pectoral 
uh, muscles, the pectoralis minor and the pectoralis major. From the second part, the first artery was the thoracoacromial artery. Let us see. And I told you it will divide into four branches. So those four branches are first is the clavicular branch. As the name suggests, this is going to go towards the clavicle. It supplies sternoclavicular joint and the subclavius muscle. Sternoclavicular joint and subclavius muscle. It is simple to remember. Clavicular branch has to go towards the clavicle. Go still where? Sternoclavicular joint. And which muscle uh, takes origin from the inferior surface of the clavicle that is subclavius? Which is the second branch? The second branch is pectoral. As the name suggests, this is going to supply the pectoral muscles. In addition to that, in the pectoral region, we have the memory gland. So it will also supply the memory gland. So pectoral branch will supply pectoral muscles and the memory gland. Then the third branch is acromial. So this is going to go towards the acromion. So there we have the deltoid muscle, right? So it will supply deltoid muscle and it will participate in an arterial anastomosis which occurs at the acromion. That we will deal in some other video. So this is the acromial branch. The last branch is the deltoid branch, right? So this actually will supply deltoid muscle, the name itself uh, tells, plus it will also supply the pectoralis major. This will be actually passing along that deltopectoral group. So that way you can remember it will supply both these muscles, that is the deltoid muscle as well as the pectoralis major muscle. So uh, thoracoacromial, what are the four branches of that? First is clavicular, try to imagine in your body, first goes towards the clavicle, so clavicular, another to the pectoral region, pectoral, and these two are going towards the shoulder region. One is acromial and the other is deltoid. Let us see which is the second branch from the second part, that is lateral thoracic, and this uh, supplies the pectoral muscles, again, as well as the serratus anterior muscle also, plus the memory gland. Right? So, because it's, it is going along the lateral region, right? lateral aspect of the pectoral region. right? So, that's why mainly the pectoralis major muscle it will supply, serratus anterior which is taking origin from the upper eight ribs. right? So, or that is present more on the lateral aspect of the pectoral region. So, that will be supplied plus it will also give to the memory gland. So, now we can see the second part of the axillary artery is also besides supplying the muscles of the um, uh, pectoral region and of the shoulder region, they are also supplying the memory gland. Coming to the third part, so we have the first branch is anterior circumflex humeral. As I said, it winds around surgical neck of humerus anteriorly and gives an ascending branch. This is going to run in this bicipital groove, which is present intertubercular sulcus, which is present between the greater and the lesser tubercles of the humerus. And this will supply head of the humerus and the shoulder joint. So these two structures will be supplied, so important artery. Then we have the posterior circumflex humeral. This also winds around the surgical neck of the humerus, but this is placed posteriorly. And this will supply shoulder joint also, and it gives a descending branch. Anterior circumflex gave an ascending branch, right? To supply the shoulder joint and the head of the humerus. This will give a, besides giving a branch to the shoulder joint, it will give a descending branch. Now this descending branch is going to anastomose with a branch from the profunda brachii artery. So this is posterior circumflex humeral. Third is the subscapular artery. The subscapular artery, now as the name suggests, it has to go posteriorly towards the scapular region. So this will divide into two branches. In fact, we can say that it gives a branch and then continues as the other branch, which I'll show you a little later. So the branch it gives is known as circumflex scapula. So it also has to wind around something. It is going to wind around the lateral border of the scapula. And if this will join the scapular anastomosis. There is an anastomosis around the scapula, right? And these arteries actually, uh, these branches, they come from first part of subclavian artery. Those branches will be there. And from the third part of axillary artery, this branch will be there, right? That is circumflex scapula. So this anastomosis is uh, on the scapula or around the scapula is between the branches from first part of subclavian artery and third part of axillary artery. 
Now the second branch or the continuation of subscapular artery is known as thoracodorsal. And as the name suggests, this is going to the uh, dorsal aspect of the trunk. And this will uh, actually uh, continue inferiorly along with thoracodorsal nerve, which is also known as nerve to latissimus dorsi. So this artery will supply latissimus dorsi muscle. So that's all for today. And thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe so that I can put more videos. And if you want questions and answers from anatomy, all of them, all important questions and answers, then please visit my website that is anatomyqa.com. I'll put the link of this website also in the description box.